Our guest today is the wonderful Carol Nolan Drake. She's been the head of her own consulting firm, Carlo Consulting, but for the past four years. Before that, for about a decade, she was the chief external affairs officer, the corporate governance manager for Ohio's Public Employees Retirement System, OPERS. So she wears that in-house investor hat. I'm Brock Romanek today on Zippy Point. So, Carol, as we're taping this in late January 2021, there's a lot of law firm memos and other documents about the human capital management disclosures that are being made. It's a really hot topic. But let's look at it from the investor side. That's a perspective that you provide so well. What do you see uh, are the things that investors want from ENS disclosures? Well, I, I will say this: most investors are juggling portfolios that could include, you know, thousands of companies, right? So their time is limited, and so that means that disclosures need to take that into account. Um, I used to count how hard it was on a company's website for me to get to the investor relations information and the reports. So if I had to keep going from one page to the next, to the next, and finally end up at the site map, the site map, you know, to find key investor relations information, that told me that they probably didn't want people to find it in the first place. Um, I don't wanna to have to waste my time for that. If it's important, it should be easy to disclose. It should be easy to find. So that's the first thing, you know, put it out there. You know, if you spent time and resources on it, make it easy for investors to find it and, you know, provide comments. Um, so that's the first one. The other, the other type of disclosure I would think is a little more informal and it goes back to having those relationships where you can contact an investor and share what might be new information. Again, not that it's you know, non-public or confidential. It's just, hey, you know, I wanted you to know that our report is gonna come out soon or we have a new policy that's in draft form and the company has asked me to go out and talk to investors about it and get some feedback. So you're one of the people that I think has a really good viewpoint. And so I, I would like to ask, you know, for your in, input on, on that. It's always refreshing when a company initiates the outreach. I always felt very honored because I knew they could have called hundreds of other people, but they called me um, and they shared information with me that I might not have known in the, you know, public domain and other than that particular call. So I think that kind of case by case review and relationship building is really important. Another disclosure type is about sharing sound data and reports that are what I would say not high on the puppies and flowers index. And one of the articles that Sally Curley and I wrote is about, you know, these reports that seem to say that, you know, the company is doing everything so well, they can do this forever and they don't even need any kind of feedback from investors. Well, you know that that's just not true. Companies have their highs and lows, they have their good days, they have their challenging days in the stock market. Um, they're dealing with, you know, lots of issues going on with employees and other things. And so the data and what they share with us, it really should be legitimate. Uh, I don't like anything that's padded. And I, I think it's refreshing when a company will say, you know what, this wasn't a great quarter. Um, maybe last year wasn't a great year, but we have plans to rebuild our employees are with us. The customer base is holding. Um, investors say, you know, they understand it was kind of a strange year for everyone, right? And we will get through this together, right? We are all building back together. And then the last thing I would say about disclosure is it really is important for the company to make it their own. What I always thought was kind of questionable as if I could read a disclosure from a company that sounded awfully similar to another company in the sector. Like, didn't they even put any time and effort into creating something that was unique for that company? Um, you don't have to create everything. You know, some certain, you know, graphs and charts are, are pretty consistent through companies. Um, and I think that's fine. But there is a balance between sharing information that's unique to that company and then other things, you know, that the industry would just want everyone to disclose. So I think that's fine. And then, you know, there is this balance between fulsome disclosure 
and excessive disclosure, which could create risks. And so I think it's okay to say, you know, Carol, I know you're, you're asking for these particular things, but we've already had internal discussions at the company and we just think that it's either a trade secret or it's confidential right now, but you can be sure if there's anything that we can report, we'll report it through SEC reporting, or if I can pick up the phone, you know, I'll call you and tell you. Um, so those are the kind of disclosures that are helpful. We know we can read the proxy statement. We know we can look the website for certain things. We know we can look at the SEC filings, but sometimes you have to read between the lines and those relationships that, you know, you really can develop will help you understand more about the company. And then you'll vote effectively because I really think that is part of it. As an investor, you want to vote effectively at the proxy season and you want to be a good investor. You know, if you're a long-term investor, what you want to do is put your resources, which are limited, with companies that offer that growth potential. Um, that's what it's really all about. Yeah, and I'll even expand on that great point you made about plagiarism is that you don't even want to plagiarize yourself, perhaps, and that you don't want the same disclosure year after year. You want to make it sure it looks like you, right. you're you looking at this year's message, this year's theme, and mm -hmm. how things have changed. And that's perhaps that's even a great point. Draft without even looking at last year and see what you come up with before you look mm -hmm. back at last year and make sure there's this some continuity of, of the message. That's a great point. So great stuff as always, Carol. Look for other Carol's other uh, ESG videos. There are three others, wonderful. Thanks very much, Carol. Yeah, thank you, Brock. Mm -hmm.